Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. My name is uh, Rabbi Daniel Assor. We're here in Jerusalem by the grave of King David. Um, and uh, we want to uh, describe the conflict between uh, Jewish and Christian, Judaism, Christianity, Judeo-Christian conflict. Uh, and we'll go along and explain uh, our position, what we think about the conflict. Let's get inside and uh, look at the place and then we can start with the explanation. As we can see, we can see here uh, a sarcophage right here, and uh, this place, that was the place where King David took the Ark of the Covenant from Edoma Giti, and he brought it here for 44 years. The Ark of the Covenant was here because the Temple of Jerusalem was not built yet. God uh, didn't give a permission to King David to, to build the Temple of Jerusalem, despite the fact that he was seeking to build it. So therefore, the Ark of the Covenant was right here, and King David used to live in the tower, and he didn't want to build for his own a castle, because uh, there is no building, uh, there is no temple for, uh, for, for the God of Israel. So he, he, he couldn't want, he didn't want to build for himself uh, a, a castle or, or, or or um, um, a house, a, a nice house as a king, because God of Israel have no temple yet. And so he, King David, was the one that founded the concept, and he is the cornerstone, the concept of the temple. He was seeking, from, uh, asking from God to build the temple, and God told him, "You're not going to build a temple. Your son going to build a temple." So he was trying to gather gold and silver and diamonds and whatever, all, all treasures for the temple to be built in the future. And he wrote the book of Psalms in order for the Levite to read it before the altar uh, while the sacrifice will take place in the temple of Israel, uh, in the temple of Jerusalem when it will be built. Now, as we can see here, we can see huge big stones right here. And we are on the first floor. Uh, huge stones. We're gonna go even further, deeper, to see the rocks and the stones underneath to, to understand that it's from the era of the, of the first temple and even prior to the first, first temple. And, and it matches our tradition, Jewish tradition, that King David was buried here. And besides, when we look upper here, from over, over our head, take a look at Take a look at, at, at this point where the huge big stones ended and then a small little stones was built, built in the 1300 CE uh, which can provide us an information that a f second floor was not built, was not exist, was not in, was not in existence. It was built, the second floor was built 800 years ago and the last upper room could not possibly be over our head, or in, over King David tomb. And besides, um, as we can see, um, we can see the place, people are coming here to daven, to pray, um, and we have here a little space in between the wall and the tomb, uh, which was the entrance to the cave underneath of uh, King David and uh, the city, just to uh, cover it up recently, for like two years or three years ago, and we saw how they cover it up. So let's go down underneath and see the huge stones that matches the rocks and the stones of the western wall to understand that uh, the first floor it was built in the era of the first temple, and the upper floor was not even in existence at that time, in the era of the second temple. As we can see, 
uh, right here, we can see the stones. They're just uh, like the stones in the, in the Western Wall. Very huge, big stones that can um, be a compelable evidence that um, the tomb of King David uh, belonged to the era of the first temple, or even prior to the first temple uh, of Jerusalem. And that's the right place for the tomb of King David. Um, while when we look, when we saw upstairs, we saw right above, over the soldier, we, uh, the, 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 over, over the head, we saw a small little stones that uh, was built uh, in the 1300 uh, CE, which is uh, like 800 years ago, and couldn't possibly be um, uh, the Last Supper room, because uh, the Last Supper room was not existed in the time of the Second Temple of Jerusalem. All the archaeologists agree that uh, the, um, the, there was no um, um, second floor above the tomb of King David, and uh, therefore that's not the right place. Besides, we have to understand that according to the Jewish tradition, it's impossible to do the Last Supper uh, over a grave in a cemetery that was, this area was a cemetery. This area was a grave of King David. You, you don't go as a Jew uh, that's keeping the Jewish tradition and, and uh, taking a, a place inside uh, a cemetery over the grave of King David. And we, we also have to understand that um, all, what, all the claims of Christianity, uh, there is a, a conflict among Christians whether this place is uh, the, the Last Supper room. For example, the Protestants are not coming here at all. They don't think, they don't consider the Last Supper room as the right place. It's, it's, a, <clears throat> it's a big debate among themselves. And besides, if, if, we, if we want to really to understand what's going on there, we, we claim that they're trying to build a legend over our head. For example, they could could have picked up any other place and claim that uh, it's uh, the room of last uh, the uh, last upper room, uh, but they uh, Christianity chose or the branches of Christianity that chose this place, they picked up very precise over the tomb of King David to claim that King David died like any other human being and. Jesus overtook him and he rose erected from the death on his back and he replaced him. So therefore they need to pick up exactly this place. And again, they want to uh, uh, create another a legend of another new religion and overtake Judaism. And therefore they want to, to claim that the New Testament emerged and was created and the universal, the universal church was created right here above the uh, tomb of King David because it symbolized the Ark of the Covenant that was here for 44 years, the Old Testament that like if it passed away and then the New Testament emerged over, over their head. So in order to create the legend they had to pick up this place. But if we really want to know what's going on, then we have to dig in, into the theology of Christianity. And according to the theology of Christianity, uh, we have the four Gospels, Matthew, Marcus, Lucas, John. John is the fourth uh, uh, um, Gospel. And he contradicts the Synoptic Gospel, which is Matthew, Marcus, Lucas. The Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Marcus, Lucas, claim that the Last Supper was Seder Pass Passover Seder. But then John contradict them and claim, no, it was the eve of Passover. Why is it that the Gospels, the fourth Gospels, which is the latest one, contradict the Synoptic Gospels? Because he was, uh, was the last one. And he understood that if he want to claim that Jesus was the lamp of Passover, he had to, we as a Jew, according to our tradition, we had to sacrifice 
the lamp of Passover in the eve of Passover. So, it, so the Last Supper couldn't possibly be, so he, he must die in the eve of Passover. So it, 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 it's impossible to claim that the Jewish people took someone to kill in the holiday. He understood, John understood that. And he understood that, uh, that, that in, he understood that in order to claim that Jesus is the lamb of Passover uh, and he is a sacrifice of Passover, you have to, to, to go according to the Jewish tradition and to follow. So therefore, we have to understand. What is the lamp of Passover? Well, according to the Jewish tradition, God took us out of Egypt and he told us, take the God of the Egyptian which is the lamp of Passover. They used to worship the lamp. They used to worship Horus, which is the lamp. And Horus is the godson of the Egyptian. He was uh, uh, born in a, a virgin birth to Isis. And uh, he was uh, conceived in a miraculous um, uh, way. Um, uh, and, and, and Isis got, got um, pregnant from from Osiris, uh, uh, her brother, in a miraculous way. Um, according to the, to, to, to the Pharaoh's uh, tradition, set, uh, tear apart uh, Osiris, and he took his body part, and he threw it all over Egypt. And then Isis, uh, his, his uh, sister, was mourning, she was mourning over her brother, and then she was collecting her, his body part from all over, but she couldn't find um, the uh, um, uh, certain parts. And, uh, that, and then according to nature, she couldn't even get pregnant out of him because she couldn't find the right parts for that. Uh, but a miracle occurred, and then Osiris rose erected from the death, and then she was conceived in a miraculous way, and she delivered in a, um, a, a, a virgin birth, Horus, which basically the entire story of Christianity is the Egyptian story. Uh, the Christianity is a stretch arm of the Egyptian culture, the different names, and different metaphor, and then they try to pour into the symbols of the Jews, which is Seder, Passover Seder, which is a, a very holy and sacred uh, um, a, a meal and, and, and tradition, to pour inside Egyptian concepts. And they're basically, again, they're over our head trying to take Judaism and to pour inside the Egyptian culture. That's Christianity for us. So therefore, the fight between the God of the Egyptian and God of Israel that took us out of Egypt uh, continue nowadays. And we got to understand that, th that that's what exactly the New Testament even, even, even claim in a stupid way to take the, the God of the Egyptian to claim that Jesus is the God of the Egyptian. That's what they're doing. The Gospel of John claimed that when Jesus was on the cross, a Roman soldier took a, um, um, a knife and he pierced him on his side and blood and water came out of his side but his bones were never to be broken. Why is it? Because according to the Jew tradition when uh, we take the lamp of Passover we're not allowed to break his bones so in order to fulfill the prophecy which is not even a prophecy it's a command. Command it's not a prophecy but anyways in order to fulfill the prophecy that's what Christianity claimed, that's what the New Testament claimed, the Gospels of John. Then uh, uh, the bones of, uh, of, of, of Jesus was not broken. So clearly we see, according to the New Testament, Jesus symbolized the, the Osiris or Horus, the God of the Egyptian. And we got to understand that according to the Jewish tradition, we have to roast the lamb uh, and, and not to cook it in, or in order for the smell to spread all over the country. So the Egyptian will smell it and, and then they will remember that since the 10th of the month of Nisan, which is uh, according to the horoscope, that's the lamp 
horoscope. And, and, and in, uh, when the Egyptian, uh, the, 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 when the Egyptian came to the house of, of, the, of, the, of the Jews to take them to, uh, to uh, work on the field, then uh, to, to, to enslave them in the morning, then they saw the lamb tied to the bed. And uh, they thought that, they, that the Jewish people want to worship him, to worship the God of the Egyptian. But then, by the 14th day uh, of, of Nisan, they had to slaughter the God of the Egyptian, to take the blood, to put it on the door, uh, so, and, and not to fear the Egyptian, not to fear the God of the Egyptian and the influence of the stars, because we, are, we belong to God, we belong to Hashem, we're over the stars. Netzach, it's uh, infinitive Israel. Uh, uh, we, we are above the stars. We belong to Hashem. And God told us, gave us a condition. You want to leave Egypt physically? Okay. So you have to leave Egypt spiritually to leave their own God, not to believe in Him, to slaughter Him. When? Exactly in the middle of the month, when the moon is full. And when the sun is in Nisan month, and the influence of the stars of the land over the earth, planet earth, is the most stronger, when the Egyptian worshiping it, then at that time, don't fear him. Be, belong to me. It, 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 slaughter the God of the Egyptian. And then we have to do it, not to break his bone because, bones, because if the Egyptian will enter, to our house after they saw the smell, the smell, and then they saw the blood in the, in the, in the, at the door, and then they break the door and, and walk inside, they will be able to see a compatible evidence that it's not a steak of a cow or any other meat, but their own God. And if they come while we um, scale the, the, the lamb, then they will see a complete lamb. We're not allowed to cut him to uh, portions or to, uh, uh, but, but a complete lamb. Uh, so they will see their own God on, on the fire. Why is it? We have to believe that because we don't believe in the God of the Egyptian, that's, that's exactly why the miraculous of, the, of, 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 uh, of living Egypt from, and, and living the exile and, and, and walking out of Egypt to the land of Israel will occur, the redemption will occur, because we don't believe in the God of the Egyptian. That's why we have to have our shoes on, we have to have our uh, stick and our um, uh, pack on our back when we eat the lamb of Passover, because we want to show the Egyptian that we are, God is about to create a miracle, and because we don't believe in their own God, we are about to leave Egypt, God will will create the miracle of living Egypt and, and, and from, from exile to redemption. Now by, by the, but what we see here is a, a, a try to create a legend um, and, and to, try to, to try to overtake Judaism um, in, in many ways by uh, putting the uh, room of the Last Supper right above the tomb of King David, sim symbolically by using the most holy tradition, which is uh, the uh, Passover Seder, and pouring into it uh, the Christian concept, which is even a paganic, because uh, they do believe in the, in the, in the, uh, um, uh, that the, when they drink the wine, they believe that uh, it become um, the blood in their mouth, and literally, and they believe that when they eat the um, matzah, that's the flesh of, of Jesus, and then it become in, miraculously in their mouth as a flesh. So they're very con basically a very cannibalistic, I'd say, a very paganic uh, ritual that have nothing to do with the commands of the Torah, which basically uh, not allow us to do such a thing. It's a, a contradiction to the Torah law. Uh, so therefore, if I, if I would like to sum everything, then I would say there is a reason for it. In order to overtake another culture, you have to create a legend over, over their head. But we do know that the Vatican, 
basically want to relocate the Vatican and bring it to the Mount of Zion, right here. Not the second Vatican, but the first Vatican going to be here in order to rule the world and to create a world religion. And, the, and therefore, they have a, that's, that's a place where a con conflict. Some Christian claims, no, we don't even... The, the fact that King David is, is, is bury, burying here and you believe in it, it's also a legend. But that's not true. We do know that those Christians, the nominations that are coming here, are believing that, that King David is being buried here. But why mean we know that? Because they ask from the Israeli government to give them five times a year the opportunity to enter to the tomb of King David, not to the upper floor, to the second floor, but to the, to the tomb of King David. To, uh, to what, what for? To do the miss inside. If they don't believe that King David is being buried here, they don't believe that the Jewish tradition that over 3,300 years is true, why is it that you are asking from the Israeli government and from the Israeli police to grab us out with our tefillin on our head in the middle of, the, of, of a shachrit davening, uh, with the Sefer Torah opening, with our talits, by force, with insultment, and then allow all the priests or, or the bishops of the Greek, uh, um, um, Orthodox Greek uh, um, Church and uh, the um, 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 Catholic Church to enter to the place and to do their own mace by the supervising of the Israeli police, the supervising of the Israeli government, because they do believe that it's not a legend. So why is it that they claim such a thing? Basically, they want to deceive the Israeli population. It's a conspiracy that um, uh, the, the Vatican is trying, uh, basically the, the Vatican is trying to deceive the population by financing the excavation of the archaeological excavation in the valley down there to claim that the city of King David is down there and not up here in the hill. But it's impossible that King David will protect the city of Jerusalem from underneath the valley. He must be a poor general to choose such a thing. He must, and we have a compatible evidence, that's the, the house of, of weapon, or a house of the heroes, when, when they put their weapon, we were able to find it archaeologically, and it's right here up the hill. It's not down there. And we, ha we were able to, to find out uh, archeo ar archaeologic founds uh, here, for example, the tower of the walls of the first uh, uh, temple and the second temple that was circling this mountain. So uh, this mountain was, uh, was inside the walls, and in order to protect the city, you have to be inside the wall. You cannot be outside the wall. Besides, we, have, we know that King David was buried here. And the question is, according to the law of the Jews, we, we cannot, the, the, inside, the, in, inside the walls, we have to keep it clean, pure. Uh, so therefore, there was a tunnel underneath from the grave of King David to the river outside of the walls, which is a Shiloh and uh, uh, to keep it uh, clean. But when where the place where Christianity claimed where Jesus was buried, the Golgotha place, it's just impossible place to, to bury at that time of the second temple because it was inside the wall. And so it was very far from the second temple wall that circled the city. So, and there is no tunnel from uh, that, that can take the unclean, uh, uh, um, uh, unpure um, thing from, of the dead body out of the city. So it, it's a legend that Christianity was created. Besides, according to the rule, the governmental rule, the Christians are not allowed to, to do a Misa, complete Misa, which, is, which means with all the symbols to engrave on the floor a cross, to light up candles, to bring their, um, 
uh, icons of, uh, uh, of, of, of the cross of like uh, in a height of uh, a four meter or two and a half meter or to do the miss. They're allowed to sing. They don't have to do, they're not allowed, they're not allowed to do a, a misa. But then they don't keep the rules. They do their misa. They light up a uh, smell and, 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 and uh, all the ceremonies that we know that according to the rule and according to the status quo they're not allowed to do. They break the law here in the last upper room. And even when they're allowed to enter to the King David tomb in the first floor, just to mumble a prayer with their lips, they also do all the ceremonies with all their symbols, even though it's a synagogue, even though it's a Beth Medlash when we study Torah, even though it's the middle of a prayer, of, of a Jewish prayer with a, with a tefillin on our head and, 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 and Sefer Torah open and with a big insultment by grabbing us outside from the uh, tomb of King David so they can do their own ceremony and break the law and cannot claim anything because probably the Vatican have a lot of force and a lot of influence over the Israeli government and they dictate what to uh, which law to be applied and which one not to be applied and probably it's being a selective application of the law which is not to not uh, uh, for us, but probably more uh, to uh, appreciate the Vatican and the, and, and the, uh, the Orthodox Greek uh, Church rather than to appreciate the native Jewish people and their own tradition. That's a shame. As we can see here, we can see two sets of steps. The steps where the unpure people used to walk down the steps and after getting baptized, they used to climb the step, the, the other uh, set of steps behind it, so they won't touch one another. And that's the place where King David used to get baptized, to purify himself. A year ago, right here in this place, we can see here uh, stones and rocks. This place will suddenly open. A wall were, a, a hole were open underneath the wall. And right here we can see the we can see the walls of the German church. Nearby we have the Greek Orthodox Church. But then the the uh, priests and monks right away they came to cover it up so nobody will enter to that place because right underneath the church there is a lot of rooms and, and, and treasures that King David buried for, and Solomon uh, King didn't use them for uh, the first temple when he built it, but uh, he kept them for the third temple. Now, there was many people that were trying to enter to the cave in order to rob or to, for, for bad intention or to, to enter to the to the treasure places and to rob them. Um, for example, for example, Holdos, with his two uh, guards, enter uh, to to rob the place to take the treasure of uh, King David or the, where, where Solomon the king uh, hide them. But King David Meta swore with angels to protect the place, the third temple. So. Uh, the angel will give the key to the Messiah, to the real Messiah, to build the third temple. So the two guards of Holdus die right inside, where a uh, tongue of fire, two tongues of fire, burn them up, and Holdus left, uh, left the place, and uh, uh, since then he didn't come back to himself. He was, you know, uh, um, it's kind of a, a terrified till till the day he die. Um, uh, that he, we have a lot of legends about the place. Uh, 120 years ago, when the mandatory Turkish used to rule the the place, there were two, there was two painters, a father and his son, that used to paint for the Turkish government, 
And uh, since it was a, uh, a Muslim holiday, so they left them along and they decide to enter to the cave. When they enter, they saw a big, huge veil and in writing, in Hebrew writing, was uh, uh, um, a, a big sign that said uh, uh, the, the graves of, uh, of the kings of Judea. Uh, and um, they saw the grave of Solomon king, the grave of Hezekiah the king, and the grave of King David. Uh, and they, they uh, bend uh, right away because they saw a big light and they, f they, they, they were sure that they're about to die and they start to mumble prayers and they were able to leave the place alive. Uh, we have that testimony of the painters that were giving to, to um, the big rabbis back then and uh, they took a, um, a draw of the place exactly what they saw. So we have the evidence of the painters. Uh, we have also some other evidence uh, 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 of the people that were trying to enter, two priests that were trying to try to enter 800 years ago. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> when they enter, a big storm uh, made them fall to the ground and for 24 hours they lost their consciousness and they were, you know, uh, right there inside inside the cave on the floor and after they woke up they, they ran away and they came to their uh, high priest and he went to uh, Rabbi Avraham, Const uh, Avraham Constantine uh, and um, he asked him he told him what happened and then Rabbi Avraham told them okay uh, let's enter together a week from now and and see what's going on underneath so 24 hours after those two uh, monks that enter were found on their bed, the, the dead. So uh, Rabbi Avram figured, okay, it's not the will of God. So they shut down all the place and there is no, um, no enter to the cave. As we can see, we can see the trees like bending to the king, King David that, that was buried right here. And so it's, a, it's another phenomena we, that we can see it clear. But by the year 67, the, the Jewish people could not go to the Western Wall. They used to put here a tent. That's the place where they used to build their tent in, uh, in uh, Chag Shavuot, in Passover, and to stand here and to come and to daven by the, <coughs> by the Last Supper Room, which was a synagogue. And I'd like to add one thing, <coughs> UNESCO claim that Mama Rachel, Rachel, the tomb of, uh, of Rachel is not a place. There is a, an Arab uh, Sheikh that buried there and uh, in Hebron, in the cave of Hebron of the, of the, of the fathers. No, that's not the real place. And uh, the Jewish people have nothing to do with the Western Wall or the Mount of the, te of the Temple of, uh, of Solomon. Of course, they will say so. They go with the New Age movement. They're going by the books of Ellis Bailey, which prior, prioritize Lucifer over the God of Israel, over the God of the Bible. So therefore, they're trying to pull the carpet from underneath the Jewish people and their tradition because there is a cultural fight. We are not impressed with UNESCO. They have no, no credit. And we don't really care what they say because they're not entitled to contradict 3,300 years of history and tradition that we have here. We used to come, dove and pray through the thousands of years, through the era of the first temple, second temple. We know our way. UNESCO, before, before UNESCO was created, King David and our fathers and our tradition used to be existed. I thank you for listening. As we can see here in the Mount of Zion, we can see the house of Hera, where they, where they used to put the heroes that, that used to protect the city, used to put here their weapon. So we have an archaeologic uh, uh, evidence or proof that the city of, of David was here uh, up the hill 
like we expect from he wise heroes, from uh, a, a, a wise general to protect the city from the height, not from the valley. And uh, therefore we, we know uh, that uh, this place was the place of the, of the real place of the real city of King David. Now, we, we know that we are not allowed to excavate here, but that's something that's supposed to, to, to raise questions. Why is it that nobody here, we can see stones just like in the Kotel, just like in the Western Wall. Why nobody come here to dig what they're trying to hide? Where they're, they're trying to cover. They're trying to cover the truth. They're trying to convince us to go to the, to the valley and to be convinced that the city of David is right there and not here so they can take over. Besides, we have evidence that the walls of the first uh, temple and the second temple were, you know, circling the mountain and uh, uh, and therefore, when uh, uh, th therefore we know that the city of uh, of uh, of Zion is inside the walls to protect the city from within, and uh, we have uh, um, here the uh, um, American University uh, or American College uh, that covering up another uh, archaeological found, which is the tower of the two walls that meeting together from the south and th from the west and that and, and, and right in the middle was a tower and we have that um, um, archaeologic found right inside that American college where it was built right above it so um, we do know uh, for sure that uh, that's the place now here was the entrance to the city, the entrance to the, to the cave, uh, which fill up with a lot of sand now, and they have to dig inside to find that big entrance to the tomb to uh, go to and to visit the, the, the real tomb of King David. Uh, uh, and in, inside, the, inside the Zion mountain. Unfortunately, um, uh, uh, we can see here a lot of cemeteries of the Greek Orthodox and the Catholic and uh, they want to be buried right here uh, because according to the legend, uh, uh, Jesus, he revealed himself according to uh, Luke and, uh, and, uh, and John uh, in Jerusalem. But that, there is no evidence that it was here like we told you, uh, there is no specific place. And besides, there is a lot of contradictions between the tradition of the Christian. And I think that in order to sum all that, when we have, when, when the Christian tradition is so unclear, so obscure, cannot go and, and build a legend and, and insult some other people, a native people that live here, that have, that inherit the blessing of the Bible and they are the uh, uh, ascendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and try to overtake their symbols and to pour inside uh, a Christian um, oil and to try to, um, and, uh, to, to overtake Judaism with, uh, um, um, I would say, uh, personifying uh, uh, the Jew's symbol and overtaking it and abusing it and converting it to Christianity. I thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoy my explanation here and uh, uh, pay attention to the contradiction of the New Testament and uh, the uh, contradiction between the Christian tradition itself about the place.